Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we are with Robert. Hello. Hi. Um, we are gonna be checking on the celery that we put to dehydrate. I've already checked on it. I know it's not ready, but I wanna show you how I can tell that it's not ready. When you look in here, you can see how much it shrunk. I mean, I didn't pack these trays down a lot, but they definitely were fuller than this. So mm -hmm. you can tell you if you if you gather, a lot of these are probably dry, but some of these you got them, you can feel them in your finger. They're, they're kind of spongy. Yeah, they're more spongy too, though. Yeah, they're not fully dried out. Yeah, and I did I dehydrated. I needed to watch to see what I did, but like this one is super spongy. But like like this one's really spongy. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like. It's very different than say this one that is pretty firm. Oh, that one just snapped, it didn't bend. But like, they're very different. But I did these on a really low temperature. I didn't mm -hmm. even like a really high temperature to get them super how crunchy. Long, how long will you need more to get them dry? I'm no. probably gonna put them in here for like another three hours, at still at 112. Three hours at 112? Three more hours at 112. Right. And I think I started this um, I think I started it at 16 hours. It was either 16 or 17 hours. I don't remember. But we're gonna pop it in for another three hours. Is that what I said? Three hours? Yeah, about three and, and we're gonna hours. Go, yeah, we're gonna go to town and then when we get back from town, we'll be back to check on this. And then we're also gonna work on today's preservation project. Alrighty, so we're ready to check on our celery. See how far we've come. This one seems done. And they won't be as crunchy as they will be when you dehydrate them at a higher temperature because you're not cooking them, you know? Um, you're just kind of slow roasting. <laughs> so, I would say these guys are done. Lovely, I'm excited. Okay, so we're gonna do this real quick here. Uh, this part of the process is super simple and we're just gonna take our sheets here I don't see any reason to continue to keep these separate. They all came out just fine. And I like to take them and put them in, portion them into some kind of a dish or just, you know, dump them into a, a dish. You can put them directly into your, your jar through a funnel, but I just find that oftentimes that's really messy. And so it's easier if you have like a big dish that can catch any of the little flakes that pop off of it. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, it depends on what you're dehydrating, but I just find it's a lot easier. It just, it catches the little, the little pieces, you know? Then I just take my container and I just dump it into my jar. I don't know if this is gonna be big enough, but I feel like it will be. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. This is a great way that you can use up your old spent canning lids. I always save the best ones that I have. And I put in, or I should say, I saved the best of the spent canning lids, the ones that, you know, they're not gross. To take one of these things, it's called a, a dry, dry pack, silica gel pack. Put it in here, it will absorb any leftover moisture that's in here. That's all there is to it. Just make sure that you put your name, or put the name of what is in here, as well as the date on here, and you just, we're gonna, I'm gonna stick it on my shelf over there. Next up, we're gonna do two different, we're gonna do two different projects for the rest of the day. We're gonna roast up some beef bones so that we can make bone broth for a future project. And then um, we are gonna make instant rice. That's gonna be our project for today. So we're gonna get started on two projects now. The first one we're getting ready to start doing is in a few days when the bone broth is finished, we're gonna be making some French onion soup, but I wanna make a really good, delicious, deep, roasted flavored uh, beef broth to to make it in so the first step to doing that of course is roasting the bones if you don't know how to make uh, beef broth i'm going to kind of run through it with you here but i have a much more detailed video then i'll try and remember to link it down below if i don't link it let me know and i will um, add it to the add it to the um the description but First thing that you need to do is you have to roast your bones or it will taste like a nasty, gross butthole, okay? It's just roast your bones. It doesn't matter in um, like chicken or rabbit, things like that, doesn't matter. You don't have to do it. But when you're cooking beef bones, I don't know if that applies to any other ruminant animals, but beef for sure, roast your bones and roast them to a nice, deep, dark brown color. 
like almost black, like almost burnt. Like I'll show you what I mean later on. But first thing that we need to do, I somehow managed to lose all of my 13 by nine baking dishes in the move. I have not found them and we've gone through every box. So I think somehow it got broken, it got misplaced, maybe it accidentally got donated, but we're gonna make do here because that's all we can do. So I'm just gathering up whatever dishes that I can and we're gonna spread out these bones here among the dishes that we have, okay? So I pulled these out of the freezer right before my live stream. Oh, this is a beef heart. I didn't mean to pull that. Glad I didn't let it thaw all the way. Hopefully, yep, soup bones. Okay, so we got four packs of soup bones. This will be plenty. You can do this with like steak bones and stuff like that. These are still pretty frozen. So we're gonna have to put these into the oven and enough to get them to cook and to separate. And then after we can do, after we do that, then they'll start to actually char. If you're wanting to make broth that is going to be super jelly, which is not necessary when you're canning things because it's not, the, gel, the canning process generally diminishes almost all, if not all of the gelatin in whatever broth you're making. So it's not a huge concern of mine, um, but you wanna make sure that you have enough that you're gonna give enough flavor and good things to it. Hopefully I'm not undercutting it. So I have the oven preheating to 400 degrees. It's a, it's a range. It's not, it's, it's not an exact science. You don't have to do it at a certain temperature. That's just the one I picked. So I want to get these things to thaw as quick as possible. It's kind of getting late. It's 9.30, I don't wanna be up all night. And this is gonna to have to cook for probably like two hours, so I'm probably gonna break my in bed by 11 o'clock rule tonight. But as soon as we get these out of the oven, uh, we can get them into the roaster and then just set it and forget it almost. It's been, I don't know, almost an hour. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these guys out. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. You just get them separated. You can see these bones are filled with bone marrow. So those are gonna be delicious. So we're just gonna separate all these out, kind of flip them over, turn them around. Do the hokey pokey. This one's kind of full up here. That one's not quite ready to separate, so I think. I'm gonna move this down to the bottom because the bottom seems to be um, defrosting quicker. So just leave that in there for a little bit and then I'll bring you back and I'll show you what this looks like once it's supercharged. Two things left that we have to do. When I turned on the stove earlier, um, I forgot that I left my salt in the, from the eggs from the other day. So we're gonna put it, in, it cooked in the oven for a little while so it kind of re-dried and now we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna put it in our Ziploc like I told you I was gonna do it the other day. We're just, it, it like solidified into like a mass of dried salt. So we're just gonna kind of fry it off the pan. So probably would be a smart thing if you use like a nonstick pan like I did. That's just a brick of ice of salt, isn't it? It's salty. And you definitely want to make sure that you're marking this so that you don't accidentally use it for something else. And remember that you have it for the next time you make salted egg yolks. Egg yolk salt. All right, now we are gonna go ahead and cook some rice in the Instant Pot, and then we're gonna dehydrate it in the dehydrator so we have some instant rice. I'm pretty stoked about this. So we're gonna rinse our rice off first. I was looking into soaking rice, but I think I'm gonna skip that step just for today so we can get this project going. So we're just gonna, I have my, my little strainer in here. So I have a 10 quart Instant Pot, so I think if I did four cups of rice, I think it'll be perfect. That's not a lot of rice. We'll double it. 
And then I'm gonna show you the way that I like to, to rinse the rice. So I didn't quite get the angle I wanted, but basically I have my pot here filled up and you kind of zhuzh it. You just kind of stir it. You can see it's starting to get kind of cloudy here. And you're just rinsing off all the powders, the, the you know, whatever gross stuff might be on here. Uh, I want to soak this stuff. Um, I want to soak this stuff, I think I was saying a second ago, but I want to soak this stuff better, longer, kind of like you soak the beans. But I want to see if we like this before I, I do something like that. And I just want to get something preserved for today, so we're going to do this. I don't usually cook eight cups of rice, so this method may not work the best with eight cups of rice, but it works just fine with two. And you're basically just going to keep doing this until it runs clear. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook our rice in the Instant Pot. According to Instant Pot's directions, we need uh, one to one ratio of liquid to um, liquid to rice. So we, we have eight cups of rice, so we need eight cups of liquid. We're gonna use our, some of our home canned chicken broth. And since we are dehydrating this, we wanna make sure that we're using stuff that has the least amount of chicken broth possible. One video that I watched was by Our Acre Half, Half Acre Homestead, and she, she suggested putting this in the fridge so that you can defat it before you pour it in here. So I'm gonna pour it in here through a sieve and I'll catch as much as possible. So we'll do a sieve with the coffee filter and see how far that gets us. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. Natural bacteria and yeasts that are already present on your vegetables to help preserve them. This is gonna take forever, so I give up. We're gonna do it on top of muzzle cloth instead. This usually filters out a fair amount of the particles, but still lets you actually render it in a reasonable amount of time. Once the fermentation process is finished, we're gonna be turning these peppers into a Don't delicious hot crazy with that. Sauce. We are trying to, trying to sift it out. Okay, so we close this, move that, make sure that this thing is set to sealing. And according to, um, according to Instant Pot, it says four minutes. And I believe we're gonna do four minutes and a slow release. Um, we're gonna just let this thing cook away. And then in the meantime, I just flipped over the bones and got all, all the parts that are not already, uh, that are not still red are exposed. We got everything separated into its own little bits. And then I have the water is warming up on the stove. So um, once the bones are ready, we're not gonna have to wait forever for the water to heat up. I don't usually do that, but since it's so late and I don't wanna stay up late, I don't wanna sit, wait forever for the water to come to a boil. So hoping that will help cut back on my time. <laughs> All right, so I will see you when we do something else. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that the bones are ready. I was just looking in there. And you can see, if I could close that, you can see how charred these guys are. Like, they're pretty dark. You could even go darker than this if you wanted to but like they're cooked. Actually, I think I will put that in here because <laughs> there's so much flavor in this pan. It's not even funny. And I want it to be in the broth, not in the rendered fat. See, look at this. That's flavor. So we're gonna crank this up to high until um, until it starts to simmer. Once it simmers, we're gonna regulate the heat to a very low, barely bubbly simmer, right? 
at that time there's probably going to be some scum that's going to form at the top it's like a white white kind of scum that forms on the top you're just going to scrape that off and then we're going to add salt to this i'm going to say probably i would add half a cup of salt and then um yeah we're just going to add like a half a cup of salt we're just going to get a nice nice meat broth here and then um sometime tomorrow yeah and we're just we'll just let it simmer overnight maybe a little bit longer this is going to be more of like a meat stock as opposed to like a bone broth later on we'll do a bone broth and we'll do that one for a different recipe and we'll add like vinegar and all that kind of stuff to it so that one will be a little bit different but this one's just gonna be a meat stock so let's go portion out our rice that is ready so now all we're gonna do we're just gonna take the rice out of the instant pot and portion it onto our uh, jelly rolls or other jelly roll trays or whatever whatever you have to put in your dehydrator Terribly sure how tightly pack this. All right, so we're gonna put it in here at 125. We'll start out at 12 hours. I have a feeling it'll take a lot longer than that. The rest of the rice, we're just gonna put into the fridge. There's not a terrible amount left. I would say when doing this, I, I totally forgot that I keep thinking I need to use those jelly roll trays and I keep forgetting that I can actually use parchment paper. I, pro I could have fit all of this on there. No problem with parchment paper. Note for next time, hopefully. And then the bone broth, as soon as that thing start, as soon as I'm able to start to regulate the heat, I'm gonna hit the sack. So if you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri. And I'm bringing you guys along and sharing with you all the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. And I also like to do all kinds of videos on food preservation like this, on canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting. And I like to show you how you can use that preserved food in your everyday cooking, as well as how you can incorporate the preserving in your everyday life. If all that sounds awesome to you, make sure you click this button right here. This is what tells YouTube that you wanna come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy Enjoy. If you have FOMO and you want to know what we did yesterday, click this right here. And then up here is the Every Bit Counts Challenge playlist. Check that out for all the awesomeness since the beginning of August. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.